There we go. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Chiropractic Compass podcast and Facebook Lives brought to you by the legendary chiropractor. I'm your host, Johnny Ruder, and today we are talking to Dr. Aaron Jacob Stagner, who is an incredible, incredible human being, and she graduated from Logan College of Chiropractic University. I'm not sure what they are now, but she graduated from Logan. We'll just say that. Everyone knows what Logan is. Um, She graduated from Logan and is a practicing chiropractor and absolutely loves her job, loves her life, and is crushing it in practice, um, helping her kids out. And I'll let you speak before we jump into um, like actual content. I want Dr. Aaron to have the opportunity to really tell her story about how she got into chiropractic and then what's led her to her mission and passion today, which is helping special needs kids, not only with chiropractic, but also through just everyday life and um, everyday activities. And uh, she is starting a program. So stay tuned for the end of this when she announces when the program is going to launch and what you can do to better get in touch with her and everything that she is doing. So Doc, please, without further ado, introduce yourself, share your accolades, how you got into chiropractic, and what it is that drew you towards really helping this community and this niche. Sure. Thanks for having me, first of all. I think it's really awesome that you take time out of your day to interview all of us and let us, you know, dump our stuff onto you. So (laughs) thanks a lot. The promo is great. (laughs) I was looking for extra avenues to get my face, you know, and my stuff out there. So thanks a lot. Um, so how I got into chiropractic, uh, I grew up in chiropractic. My mom's a chiropractor, so it's kind of like everything that I've ever done, basically. I worked in the office as a kid and in high school and then was going to go into forensic pathology. Thank God I changed my mind. How boring is <laughs> that to be? I'm standing in a lab working on people that are, you know, have passed on. That would be terrible. So um, got into chiropractic, um, graduated, and really didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I had the option of coming home to practice, which I did for a while, moved around, bounced around a little bit, had a few little practices, kind of got out of chiropractic, actually. And then my daughter actually kind of shifted my life around. And that's really what brought me back into chiropractic and what I do now. So um, my oldest daughter is 12. She's um, a high-functioning autistic, so we didn't really realize that there was a whole lot wrong with her until she wouldn't, she didn't talk on time. She was almost two years old when she talked, two, two and a half, somewhere in there, and she was really late walking, too. So it got to where we realized, okay, something's, you know, maybe she's going to be really late doing everything, and it turns out that she was. So it really just kind of became this, what do we do to help Mags? You know, how do we get her adapted into a regular classroom if she can? How do we make sure that she keeps up with her studies? How do we make sure that she's going to be as close to societal norms, whatever that means, as possible? And it really didn't come into my practice until she got old enough to go to school. And I started seeing, holy cow, there's a whole group of these kids that need our help, that need somebody to advocate for them besides their parents and besides the pediatricians that want to put them on medication or want to put them through all these therapies. They need somebody to look at their nervous system and go, okay, you know, we got to figure out how do we get all this stuff lined up? How do we get them as close to whatever is considered normal? And I hate that word. I I like to use neurotypical because it just seems to fit for the kids that I work with. So it really shifted. Maggie was really the reason that I got into dealing with special needs kids and taking care of them in my practice every day. And that's really like, that's what makes me get up and go is really special needs kids and taking care of their families. Awesome. And you are phenomenal at doing so. So I've heard through the grapevine. Um, <laughs> it oh, is. <laughs> So, I need to turn the Facebook live off and have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, we are we are going to go right into content, but first, before we do that, I want to just throw a shameless plug out there. If you are a chiropractor watching this, um, and you have a an associateship or an independent contracting slot, or you're looking to sell your chiropractic practice, whatever it might be, please consider posting your chiropractic job advert on our site, the Legendary Chiropractor website. And head to postachiropracticjob.com now to post your chiropractic job advert with us. So without further ado, Dr. Maggie, or Dr. Aaron, Dr. Maggie, Dr. Aaron. <laughs> Dr. Maybe Aaron. she'll be the doctor too. That would be awesome. <laughs> Dr. Aaron, please tell us a little bit about, like, I, we under, now we know that your daughter has is autistic and mm-hmm. so what really like flipped on in your mind that was like, this is where I need to go. Cause you went from helping high performance collegiate athletes to mm-hmm. helping and really nurturing with special needs kids and the special needs population. How did that transition take place? Sure. So I was at a division one school, um, who's about 20 minutes from my house. So my mom and I were working with those athletes traveling all across the country, um, got to meet a lot of cool people and do a lot of cool things. Um, I did that for eight years and it just got to the point where it was really taxing, not only for my family, but for me and my practice. So it was just, it was something that just, I knew I had to make a change. So the biggest thing that made that change for me was Dr. Bobby Dozier. And if you haven't met her, she's at Oklahoma Children's Chiropractic Center in Oklahoma City. Um, I actually met her at Cairo Sushi. Thanks, Tristan. Um, <laughs> and she gave this presentation of helping all these kids with cerebral palsy. And I was like, I remember looking at my mom going, what if that's all Maggie needs? Like, I've taken care of her this whole time. She's been adjusted since she was born. And obviously, there's something that I'm missing. So there's something that Dr. Bobby knows that I don't know, that I didn't get in school, that I've, I've got to go look. I've got to go and find out if that's the difference for my child. And that's what I did. I went and I just called Dr. Bobby and I said, I need your help. I don't know. I'm at my wit's end. I don't know how to fix her at this point. And I need your help. And she's like, come on. Just pack up your stuff and come on. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> like, really? Like, I'm not I'm not moving to Oklahoma City. I just, I, I, I want to come bring her and let you check her and, and figure out what's going on. And she's like, come on. I'm like, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is a little much. Maybe I've stepped off into something I know nothing about. And it turns out I did. There was so much stuff, so much wisdom in that head of hers that I've been, we've been going ever since. I mean, It got to the point where I was like, okay, I've learned all I can learn in your office. You're going to have to come to mine. And she did. She packed up and she came to Mississippi and she spent four or five days in my office. And I brought her all of my kids that I was taking care of. And I said, here they are. Help me. Help me figure out what's going on. And she did. She took her time to go, you know, here's how we look at them. It's a different perspective. You know, we're not going to look at them. Even chiropractic wise, we look at them differently. And I'm like, I've got to, I've got to go. I've got to learn everything I can possibly learn. So I went nose, you know, nose dive into it, head over heels, and I'm everything I can get my hands on. I'm reading and I'm learning and I'm trying new things. And holy cow, there's so much out there that it's like, how can I implement all of this and not totally lose my mind? So. <laughs> I think that's what we, I think that's what we think every day of our lives when it comes to just whatever we're doing, chiropractically or not. We're just like, how can I do this differently? <laughs> um, but so that's amazing. So you, you, you had this influential person come to you or you went to them and you said, you know what? I need help. Right. And, mm-hmm. or I want to know more. You might not need help, but you said, I, I need to know more because something oh. there is missing. Right. And, like how you were taking care of these children was missing. Um, so what is like, if we want to put quotes on it and call it like secret sauce, right? Like give us some tips and tricks for docs watching this that, you know, what is it that they can do differently starting tomorrow in practice to start really honing in on their skills when it comes to these children? Because I, I mean, you and I can probably sit here and say that majority of chiropractors will be taking care of these kids. Um, and all, I mean, I know your program is 
beyond chiropractic, which I think is amazing. And we'll talk about that later in the show, but chiropractically specific right now, how can we implement something in our practice tomorrow to start really helping and seeing benefits in these children? Yeah, you're right, though. A lot of us are going to be taking care of them. Like right now, it's one in 36. Mm -hmm. In two years, it's supposed to be one in nine. By 2025, it's half of the kids on this planet have autism. Wow. We're in trouble. Yeah. And they're everywhere. And it's either we're going to have to learn to take care of them and try to get them back towards more neurotypical things. Or there's not we're not going to have anybody to take care of anybody. Because it's going to be half the kids. So biggest thing chiropractically, obviously, you're going to try to adjust them. Now, the kicker with these kids is they're not going to always want you to touch them. They're not going to be, you know, they're not the kids that you come in and they sit down and they're like, I have this owie and I need you to check it and it hurts. Some of them are nonverbal. Some of them are in wheelchairs. Some of them don't walk or or any kind of functions. I mean, you're going to have to go outside of your box. Um, biggest piece of advice, and, and this is what I would do, have mom come in before the kid comes in. Because mom's going to be your biggest source of information. Mom or dad, whoever the primary caregiver is for this kid, they're going to be your biggest source of information. They're going to be able to tell you, how best to communicate, if that's even possible, how you can communicate with your kid, what are their signals, Do they can they stand to be touched, do they not want to be touched, how can we, uh, how can we even get to the point where we can check them? So the biggest thing is going to be interviewing mom before and separate from the kid. Because if you bring the child in with mom, then she's going to be super nervous about, don't touch this, don't do that, oh my God, what are we, you know, everything's going to be all on edge. You want to separate it and let mom, reassure mom that you're going to make every accommodation for that child. Probably the second biggest thing is, is you're going to need time. Okay, If you're a high volume practice, you're going to have to set aside a certain amount of time to evaluate, to have this consult with mom. When you see the kid for the first time, you're probably, I have several that I didn't get to adjust them the first time. Now, one in particular didn't want anything to do with me. And I know that's hard to believe. But it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and all I could do the first time I met her was she wanted to sit in the floor. So I got in the floor mm-hmm. and I got on eye to eye with her and I got on her level. And it took two or three adjustments or two or three visits to get to where I could adjust her. Now, the other day, she looks at me and she goes, um, Dr. Jacobs, you need to get on the table. <laughs> Perfect. <Want> me to- <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> so I got on the table and she pulls out the activator and she adjusted me. <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever works at this point. So it's going to be something that takes a little bit of time. Um, the other thing is, is that sometimes they don't like a lot of noise. So you may have to schedule them at a time where it's not really busy. Or if you have a break, like if you, you know, if you run shifts in your office, you may want to schedule them 30 minutes before your next shift starts or your very last appointment. So you have a little bit of extra time and you've got some quietness going on in the office. Yeah. The other thing is, is it's kind of like having... Anytime you treat kids, you want to baby proof your office. So like make sure the plugs are covered. There's nothing breakable, nothing they could pick up and chunk at you because I've had that happen too. Um, they can get physical at times. So, I mean, they can, you can leave with bruises. I've had that happen myself. You know, I've had friends tell me, you know, I got my lip busted. I got a concussion. I'm sorry. It just, I mean, it's just kind of par for the course. Yeah, I'm sorry. Absolutely. But the biggest thing is, is if you can, if they'll let you adjust them and evaluate them, by all means adjust them because their nervous system needs to be either calmed down or stimulated or maybe sometimes a little bit of both. And I know Gonstead would be like, don't mix the system. Sometimes you just got to go with what's on the patient. And I think you would agree with that as well. The yeah. subluxation section is on the patient. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was all very good. I, I, I took, that's an understatement is amazing. So I took a lot of notes and I want to rehash some things so that listeners and, uh, people who watch this later really can understand. And and I'm going to pick apart your brain as much as I possibly can on this subject, because I don't think we get a lot of this education in school, if any. Um, and so 
to have somebody like you on the sh- on the show, to have somebody like you as a resource to go to to ask questions, to be a soundboard for. That I think is most valuable to any listener who is watching this or or listening to it later when it comes out on a podcast. So please, um, I love your phrase neurotypical. I, I just want to say that I think that's amazing. I think it's ten million times better than normal because everybody's not like every if you compare put ten people in a line and you're like which one's normal they're all different so it's like yeah. you can't even you can't even define what normal would be especially when we're talking about anatomy and physiology which we'll get to in a second um the second thing was is you got to think outside the box um and i think that's like the 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 major thing that i took away from what everything that you were saying you know you you have to start thinking out of the box because the 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 care that you're providing is different it, the care that you're providing is is more nurturing. It's more loving. It's more. It, it's a little extra because it has to be a little extra because you have to be that much more to that person, to that exactly. to that child, to that patient, to that mom, um, to that father. No matter what you're doing, you got to think outside the box so that you can put yourself in that position. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think that's absolutely amazing. And then uh, docs out there to implement this tomorrow um the major things that she said were were, that dr aaron said were how to communicate you got to learn how to communicate and that starts with mom um or dad whoever the main caregiver is for that Mm -hmm. child you gotta you gotta learn to communicate well with them and bring them in early i love that you said that i think that's amazing and i i would have never i would have never thought of that and be like Whoa, that's cool because then it sets the groundwork for success, right? <laughs> it's like you're automatically paving the way to success of treatment of this child. And that is what matters most. And then time, you got to have time um, and you got to rearrange your schedule. You got to um, make office accommodations, no matter if that's child proofing your office or, or accommodating uh, yourself in order to be there at that mm-hmm. time and open those slots for those kiddos. And for those parents who are, you know, wanting and seeking your care. And that's another topic that we're going to talk about later is like, is, you know, how high is the care rate for people in chiropractic for these types of children in chiropractic? And I would argue that they're probably pretty high. Um, So let's talk neurology before we get to that, before we get to um, care and uh, high rates of care and uh, kiddos with special needs. Um, Let's talk neurology. I know you're a master in uh, a mass. You have your master's in sports health science or sports science, whatever, uh, whichever one you want to call it, um, and re- rehabilitation. And you also have your master's in human anatomy and physiology. So, with that being said, let's talk. Let's get sciency. Let's get nerdy here. Let's talk. You know the details behind what's going on with these kiddos. What is taking place in their nervous system from a chiropractic perspective? Yeah, so you can't even open that can of worms about neurology unless you're going to talk about primitive reflexes. Awesome. Yeah, and that's something that, honestly, I never got in school. Never heard of it, didn't know anything about it until probably the last three or maybe three years, maybe four. And it's been like, holy cow, now they're everywhere. (laughs) I look at adults and I'm like, you have a retained primitive reflex. You didn't even know about, did you? And they're like... What are you even carrying on about? So when you talk about primitive reflexes, these are reflexes that start even before you're born. They're in the womb. They're what causes the baby to move. It's what causes the baby to suck its thumb. So those are things that are primitive or part of what we call your lizard brain. Okay. This is even before your frontal cortex takes over. So these are their prenatal Once you're born, then they start to become integrated. They should all be part of your regular nervous system. They actually turn into postural reflexes that allow you to stand up and move upright. But those should all be integrated by your first year, by your first birthday. If they're not, then you start to see all these funky things that show up. So, like, I have one little boy who would go to the bathroom, and then he'd walk out the door and then urinate on himself again. And it's like, mom's frustrated because she's like, I don't understand. He just went to the bathroom, and he says that he's done, and he's still not. And I'm like, let me just 
wait a minute, let me look at something, because I think I have a, an idea of what's going on. And she's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, we'll just, get, we'll just see what happens. Not to mention that the kid had, like, huge tonsils and adenoids, but anyway. <laughs> so brought him in, and I laid him down on the table, and I said, can I see your back just a second? So I picked up his shirt, and I went from his shoulder blade down the side of his spine and out of his hip, spinal gallant reflex, right? I mean, it went off like a light bulb. This kid, like, kinked over, and I'm like, bingo, we have a winner. And Mom's like, what in the world? I said, here's what I want you to do. Take him home. Every time he has a shirt off, take a Q-tip and go from his shoulder down his back and out his hip. And I said, don't do it at the same time on both sides. And she's like, what you, what's going to happen? And I'm like, he's going to pee all over the place. Don't do it that way. Listen to me. <laughs> the one side and then the other. And you just, every time he comes by you and he has no shirt on, you stop him and go, hang on a second. And we do it a couple times. Three or four visits later, she's like, I don't know how that works. I don't know if I want to know, but he's a lot better. And I'm like, meh, it's part of it. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, honest to goodness, we were adjusting him too. I mean, let's be honest. I'm not going to adjust, not, a, you know, not check him and adjust him. Right. Now. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> things like that that I never would have thought was an even an issue before that you're like holy cow these kids are walking around with things that shouldn't have been integrated into their nervous system and into their brain by their first birthday now they're like five six seven some of them are 12 13 14 yeah. and they're still hanging on to these things that should have been taken care of a long time ago yeah. so you've got to look at primitive reflexes by far like adjust them do your chiropractic stuff but by far, let's look at primitive reflexes too. So, I mean, that's a huge part of it. Huge. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And and I think that really encompasses a lot more than people realize. Like the primitive reflexes are a huge component of human development, like you were saying. And these these milestones that, you know, they should be at certain points in our age, in our lifetime, integrated into our nervous system. And um, when it comes to... Uh, primitive reflexes, I also wrote down that they can be an amazing or one of the better um, ways to measure your outcome assessment. Like how how oh, that patient look. is doing can be measured by the, the decline of a primitive reflex. And I think that's really important. And I know a lot of functional neurologists actually do that. And they're like, okay, mm -hmm. this reflex is here, here, and here. And then they're like, okay, now all these in three months or six months or whatever you want to call it, give you the time frame, they're gone or they're diminished tremendously through right. chiropractic care, neurofeedback, stimulation, and all sorts of different things. Um, but that's awesome. I'm so glad we talked about that because docs, if you're not looking for primitive reflexes right now in your practice, you bet you, you should start. You need to start um, and you, you need to have those uh, honed in on and understand them. So, um, so let's go back to something I mentioned earlier and that is, and we mentioned some statistics and how crazy the numbers are going to be in 2020, 20 or 2030, 2050. I mean, it's going to be astronomical. Um, oh, so is there a role for chiropractors in that and talk a little bit about why you think yes or no? Okay. Um, it really, you know, it gets to be a hot topic because a lot of people want to go, Oh, it's vaccines. And I'm like, oh, can we just not? Like, let's just throw that out. Okay. I mean, and I know, I know right now people are going, I'm not listening. Click. And they're clicking and that's okay. But for me, I have to deal with people outside of chiropractic. So when I bring up a hot topic like that, I'm not going to bring up something that's automatically going to put a barrier between me and them. So Absolutely. I try to stay away from that. Yeah. And maybe I'm in the wrong. It's okay. I'll be in the wrong. It's not a problem. <laughs> we'll still come to see me. Okay. <laughs> um, does chiropractic play a role in that? Absolutely. I, I think chiropractic plays a role in a lot of things that we don't give it credit for. Hmm. The biggest thing is, is that you've got these kids and their nervous system, it all goes back to sympathetic and parasympathetic. Okay? Sympathetic is your pedal to the metal, let's fight, flight, or freeze your body's going 900 miles an hour. And then parasympathetic is, you know, let's rest and repair, let's calm everything down, let's make sure we get digestion and we rest. With these kids, though, you've got pedal, 
you know, foot on the gas and foot on the brake at the same time. And they're spinning their wheels, and there's nothing to stop either one of those. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you've got to figure out, okay, what's triggering this? And you look at it, or at least I do, from three different perspectives. One is their neurology, of course. One is their gut. Hmm. And then the other one is their immune system. And I found if you take care of the neurology and the gut, the immune system will take care of itself for the most part. That's kind of where the vaccine argument comes in, is when you have to deal with the immune system. And I totally understand that. I get it. It's just not something I choose to bring up when I talk to patients. Yeah. Because I'm in a place, um, Mississippi is one of three states now. It's us, West Virginia, and California, where you have nothing but medical exemption, and they're extremely difficult to get. So I'm not going to win that argument when I start that in my office. Yeah. I take care of the the two bigger things, and I try to support the body as much as I can. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and go so, ahead. Um, I was just I was gonna I was gonna recap. Go keep keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say if if these kids aren't getting taken care of and they're not getting adjusted, and you're not, it's almost you have to build a team. Okay, so you've got mom and dad at home and brothers and sisters and family. Then you've got your chiropractor that's involved. You're also going to have, I'm, I'm very, I'm very adamant about working with other practitioners. I'm not going to be that person that says, oh, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. I'm willing to work with other people as long as what they're doing makes sense. Yeah. You know, so I'm not above board of saying, okay, I really, I really agree with what your pediatrician says, or I really agree with what your OT or PT or ABA therapist is doing, you know, your applied behavior therapist. So, I mean, I'm really adamant, and even with the parents when I talk to them, I'm not going to take your kid off their medication. I I didn't put them on it. It's not my job to do it. I'm going to try to help their body support what it can do and help it to learn to do the things that it's having challenges with. Yeah. So I think, you know, a lot of times we want to say, oh, well, they they just need to be adjusted. I agree. They need to be adjusted. But I don't think that in these cases we're the end-all, be-all for these kids. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I think it it takes teamwork. It takes uh, takes collaboration between between health healthcare professionals. And that's a serious conversation that – uh, I don't think a lot of people are willing to have, especially in chiropractic, because we're like, you know, the toggle saves lives and it might, but also at the same time for the person that it doesn't save their life, they might need somebody else. And I think that <laughs> our, our big heads, I have a anatomically smaller head, but you know, ego, ego, <laughs> your ego just takes up the rest of the space. And it's like, man, you can't fit outdoors sometimes. It's terrible. And and I, I really, I really urge chiropractors and chiropractic students to to drop the egos, all egos aside, and take care of these kiddos, and and really treat them how you, if you had a kiddo like this, how you would want them to be treated. That is the golden rule. We all know that since we grew up, and treat people how you would want to be treated, or your kid to be treated. I think the cool thing about the position that I'm in, and I've met several other chiropractors who are in the same position is that when you have a special needs kid, you get to experience that from a parent's perspective. Mm -hmm. So when you have these kids that come into your office, now you can sit down with the parents and go, I understand. I've, I've been where you've been. Let me, let me try to see things through your eyes. Let's get some clarity around what you want to do, where you want to go, and let me try to help you get there. Yeah, absolutely. What would you recommend if if a chiropractor wants to put themselves in the patient in the patient's parents' shoes, but doesn't have that relation to kind of tie back to? What would you recommend is best for them? the The biggest thing it comes back to think outside the box. Okay. okay? Yeah. There's um there's a video on YouTube that someone shared with me last week and I'm I'll I'll put it in the, the link in the comments. Yeah, go it's for it. really yeah. amazing. But it's this picture of this blind it's a video of this blind man that's got a sign that says, um, I'm blind, I need your help. Of course it's in Spanish, but yeah. Uh, all these people keep walking past him and there's no nobody's putting money in the can. 
Well, then it, this guy walks up and he changes his words on words on the sign. And it says, it's a beautiful day outside. I just can't see it. Hmm. And then it's like everybody's throwing money. So I think if you change your perspective of, oh, it's a kid with cerebral palsy. Yeah. No, it's a kid who wants to enjoy life hmm. and has few limitations. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it, and I think if you take that any, with anybody that walks in your office, oh, they're a sciatica. No, it's a grandma who wants to go walk in with her grandkids and can't. Amen. Yes. So, and we talk about that a lot on the Chiropractic Compass podcast because it is so vital that people understand like chiropractic can help tremendously with activities of daily living. Okay, and those yeah. small things mean the biggest and have the largest impact on somebody's life than you would ever imagine. You help somebody with their wrist and they, they're, they're, you know, they type all the time and it's unbelievable the amount of, of influence you can have in a patient's life and a family's life. If you just help with these simple things and you keep it simple because that's what it's about, right? Someone comes in with a, with a knee problem, yeah, fix the knee problem first, but also ask them, hey, what is this preventing you from doing that you're not able to do, right? Like, it's exactly. simple as that, right? Do you want to golf more? Do you want to run more? Do you want to play with your grandkids on the floor more? Like, whatever it might be, just meet them where they're at and then help them because chiropractic is a powerful thing, but also we talked about the collaboration and you got to do that when the time is right. Um, mm -hmm. on, on other... To tie back to the very beginning of that, um, we got a little nerdy again, and we talked, you said, I take care of neurology, the gut, and the immune system, and wouldn't you believe it that, you know, a master's in anatomy and physiology, you're like, you know what, I'm staying away from the vaccine talk, I'm staying away, I don't, I, I'm not going to win that, I don't, and I, I loved what you said, and you're like, I'm not going to put up a barrier right away, right, like, mm -mm. why would you do that, why would you... Why would you talk about something you know is going to be very controversial with that pay, with that person? And then you're like, but I'm a chiropractor. It's like, oh, that's a But you that's know a what I find thing. funny? What's that? Is that, you know what I find hilarious yeah. about that? Yeah. When I don't bring it up, I can guarantee you before they get to that first reevaluation, they're going to ask me my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And I wait. I don't throw it out there. Yeah. I'm going to and let them come to me and then I'll tell them, yeah. you know, this is how I feel. This yeah. is what happened. This is, you know, and I've had countless people ask me, well, do you think that vaccines have, uh, have caused all this? And I'm like, do you want my answer as a mom or do you want my answer as a doctor? Right. Right. I, lo I love that. And we talked about, yeah, it, it's, it's shocking. It's like, whoa, <laughs> those are two different people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it sometimes it might not feel like that. You might feel like a parent in your office. <laughs> but uh, but the, if to bring it back to the science, right? The the gut houses. Holy smokes! Yeah. The majority of the immune system. Like, if we really want to talk science, like if we influence the neurology directly through chiropractic adjusting. And then we influence the gut through, I would imagine you're doing some dietary changes and obviously adjusting because it's the second brain and nerves exactly. go everywhere. Um, so it's like if we influence that, we can almost guarantee, almost guarantee that we're going to have some sort of influence or positive impact on the immune system. And that way it leaves that whole entire vaccine conversation out of it. I love that. I absolutely, you're, you're amazing, Dr. Aaron. I love it. Absolutely love it. And um, I also heard something that you said, they, they changed the words on the sign, right? And, and they made them, so that people started throwing more things in. It's, right. And I wrote down content and circled it because it's the message, the I, content, the message that is being portrayed or that you can see in somebody or on something that, others cannot see right like if you hold up a piece of paper and you're like oh look at this it's chicken scratch right and you're like how you know and uh i was listening to actually entrepreneurs on fire the podcast today randomly enough and they, they were like a piece of paper is worth like what a cent a penny but if you write something on it and it's like say they give the example it's the winning lottery number and mm -hmm. now that now that pa piece of paper has a million plus dollar value to it right 
And so that sign, when they changed the content of the sign and the message of the sign, it had that much more value to people. And th these kiddos have that much more value to society than they're able to sometimes express. And we can really help them with that. Would you agree? Yes, I would totally agree. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. I think cool. a lot of times people overlook them because they have some kind of diagnosis or disability that now they've they're they're not useless to society and i oh, oh my goodness i just that just lights me up like i just can't stand it like i just see there's so many things that they are able to do if you're just willing to give them the shot yeah give them the chance to do it now you may it's not going to be like dealing with your neurotypical person you're not going to be able to go i need you to do this this and this i need you to do this Yes. I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to do it together. And then you're going to be able to do it. So it may take more time. It may take a little bit more effort on your part. But I guarantee you it's going to change your life. Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee it. Slow, slowly but surely. And, and it's, it's playing the long game. It's, you know, let's take care of one step at a time because too much is going to overwhelm mom and dad or the exactly. parents. And then too much is definitely as you mentioned going to overwhelm the kiddo so mm -hmm. um so with all of that being said um i i absolutely love your team uh mom dad family at home you got the chiropractor and you got other healthcare professionals who are helping um so talk to us a little bit about your program i i would love to know more about this because i think that if if people are watching this right now or are re-watching it because i know you know you, you wake up in the morning and it's got like 300, 400 views, and you're like, where were all those people when we were live? <laughs> but talk to us a little bit about, it's called Special Needs Specialists, is that correct? Yes, so Talk to correct. us a little bit about that, where, wh what was like the birth process of that like, wh where did that kind of start turning in your head, like I need to, I need to do this certification program for these, for this. Sure, so it really just got to the point where I was listening to parents in my office saying, you know, like, where can I take them to get their hair cut? Where can I take them that we can go eat as a family and people aren't going to stare at us because my child is screaming at the table or they're not happy with what they got to eat? Um, where can I take them to go play? Where can I take them to go have, we can go have a family adventure or family time together. Where's a good pediatrician that you like that is geared towards special needs kids? Or who do you like for OT or PT? And all these, these parents are asking me all these questions and I'm like, I know who I use, but I need a, I really need a network. Like I really need a group of people or a community that we all speak the same language. And I'm like, holy cow, I got work to do. I got work to do. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, Barb Eaton is my one of my favorite people on the planet. She's like, yes, you will do this. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I know exactly everything. She goes, you know, you take care of these kids. You mommed one of these kids, and you're still momming her, and you've got this. And I'm like, yeah. look at well, I, you know, hooked up with the people that I hooked up with, got all the ball rolling, and it's still rolling. So it's going to be um, an eight-week class. It's all online, um, and it basically walks you through, you know, where did we start with special needs kids? How did we get here? We're going to talk about neurotypical brains and the nervous system and cranium and how that's all worked together. We're going to talk about primitive reflexes. We're going to talk about how to look at those. We're going to talk about IEPs and dealing with school. We're going to talk about how do we um, try to find the right people to take care of our kids. And the cool thing is, is that I geared it towards families and professionals because I wanted to create that community where we do all speak the same language. And it's like, I really feel like it's overwhelming even for me to talk about it. <laughs> like, I can't believe I thought that I could do this. But it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like I've pulled out anatomy books and my kids are even like, I really don't want to hear anything else about Moro. Okay. <laughs> like, but it's important and you need to know how to do it. And then they're like, is this about Maggie again? <laughs> no, it's not just about Maggie. It's about everybody. Yeah. But because people know that I take care of these kids, 
Now my kids are even involved in it. So it really has become like a family adventure more than anything. But back to the back to the case at hand. It's launching in August. Awesome. Barring, barring nothing crazy happens between now and then. So I'm oh. super excited. You're Sorry. ringing. My phone, yeah, I don't know what just happened there. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, where is that coming from? Um, <laughs> um, but, oh my goodness. Um Jeez, I am so sorry, Dr. Aaron. Um, anyways, let's so we have your program launching August. Do you know a specific date? We're launching we're planning on mid August. As soon as I get the date nailed down, I promise you you'll be on the list of the first people to know. Ah, I would love that. Thank you. Um and so with that, um I want to talk a little bit about how people and doctors especially um, can go about creating this all-inclusive collaborative effort to take care of these kiddos because it sounds like they can get certified in you know helping special uh, needs children um, but how do they go about making that leap um, and I love what you said about you know you like to bring the family and the and the doctor together and the professional together I think I, I love that. And how do we get the doctor and the doctor also on the same page, right? Like, cause if you're talking to somebody who hasn't done your program, how are they, how are you going to, you know, communicate what you're trying to do in your office a little bit easier so that they're like, okay, yeah, let's work on this together. Sure. I think that the end all be all is you have to make the kid or the child the central object. Okay. So it comes back to, and I say this all the time to my patients. I know what I know and I know what I don't know. Yeah. So if I'm, and it comes back to that ego. I'm willing to step back and go, this is what I work on. And this is what I feel really comfortable about. I'm not going to go stepping on anybody else's toes. So I think once you get, once you have that first meeting with that caregiver, that with those parents, and you sit down and you explain to them, look, I'm going to try to help your child express their optimal potential. They're probably, you know, and you go back to, there's a limitation of matter. Yeah. There is going to be some things I'm not going to be able to help fix or help correct or help even improve. The thing is, is I want your, your, your child's body to be able to do everything it possibly can. Does that mean I'm going to make sure that they don't have spastic paralysis anymore? No. Right. At the same time, I want to work together with all the people that you work with to make sure that we get this taken care of. Mm -hmm. So I think in that, you, you do your evaluation. You come up with everything that you know in your treatment plan. And then you go back to the parents when you do that ROF and you go, I'm willing to work with everybody else that you work with. I'm going to ask that if you're okay with that, I'd like to send my report to their pediatrician, to their teacher at school, to their OT or PT or ABA therapist, if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah. They're going to tell you yes. Yeah. Right? I've only had a handful that didn't, and that was because their child wasn't really severe. Most of the time, they're like, please, would you? Yeah. Would you help them under help them understand what you're doing, and then you can talk to them directly? Once you... In and, you know, you're going to get some feedback. You're going to get some blowback, probably. It's just going to happen because there are closed-minded people outside of chiropractic, too. Yep. Right? Yep. They just are. I'm in a position in my particular town that the pediatrician that we use, there's only like three or four here. The ones that are in his office are patients. <laughs> so it works out really well. <laughs> he understands, you know. But once you get into that group of kids, or once you see those one or two special needs kids, you're going to have a ton of them because they all, we all know each other. Right, right. We have to. There's community here, and there's one in your town too, I promise you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Of all these special needs families that talk and communicate and bounce ideas off of each other. And if they're not, there's Facebook groups. I'm in them. Okay? <laughs> 
And we bounce ideas off each other, like my child is doing this. How do you, you know, what do you do about it? What do you think about this? And a lot of times chiropractic is not mentioned. Yeah. So if you want to get into that niche, get in those groups. Yeah. And say, have you tried chiropractic? Have you thought about getting them, you know, getting their nervous system checked? Yeah. And a lot of times they'll go, no. Are you sure? Can the chiropractor, like, how do they do that? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Floodgates! <laughs> Let me check that out for you right quick. And yeah. Click. No. Yeah. But it sounds like it sounds like the communication is very similar to how you would you know approach any other new patient. You know, it's not. Sure. I said floodgates jokingly, but it's not like, oh, I'm gonna dump all of this information and science and anatomy and physiology that I have and know. <laughs> And can give them right here, right now. It's like, hey, I want to meet your kiddo where they're, where they're at, and I want to meet you guys, the parents, where you're at, because that Absolutely. I'm gonna. I, I all I want to do is assist both of you on this journey, and hopefully, chiropractic can play a role in that. And I think that if you approach it from that standpoint and that mentality, you're not trying to win anyone over. You're not trying to close anybody. You're just. You're just being yourself. You're just telling the truth and it's telling people, you know, this is like you said, this is what I know. This is what I've seen. And here is, you know, here are the options that we offer in our office for your kid. Right. And I think that a lot of times doctors get too over their head and especially students. I mean, myself included, we get too over our head with like, here's everything you need to know about chiropractic in four minutes. And it's like, I don't know the last time I've been on an elevator, but my speech is like that, right? It's like, it just starts coming out when someone says chiropractic and I'm like, they don't even get past the IRO and I'm like, oh my God. Yes. Let's talk. It's like, come on. You can't do that to people. (laughs) Here's the thing. And it comes back to what's your personal mission. Yeah. Okay. So my, my thing is really simple. I want to expand the idea of optimal potential for professionals and for families when it comes to special needs kids. Yes. That's the only thing I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want you to see them as what they could be, not what they are. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I think if you're, if you're in tune with yourself and you, you come from a place of good intentions and right intentions it's going to take care of itself. Yeah. yeah. It's when you come at it and you're like not confident in what you're doing and you're not, I hate to say this, you come across kind of car salesy. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know how to, I think you get it right here in your heart and you get it, the head stuff will come through. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can explain our project to them every visit right. a little bit at a time. Yep. Yep. Okay. Baby steps for kiddo and parents, um, and for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's important to recall. So exactly, yeah. I'm not going to do. I'm not going to send them home if I check all their primitive reflexes. I'm not sending them home with exercises for every single one of them. Because <laughs> one, they're not going to do them, yeah. and two, they don't remember what I said in the first place. Right. Right. One at a time. You can barely get someone to do resistance band work and let alone let alone giving kids or parents, you know, primitive reflex exercises to do it. Or changing their gut. Like I want you to go home and take out all the gluten in your house. <laughs> just go ahead and, and remove going, your pantry with the gluten? food in it and just walk away. Just just get it away. <laughs> just burn it down. <laughs> Throw it all out light a fire and burn it. You're like, what? Um, but the thing is too, is that when you start taking care of these kids, you're automatically going to take care of their family because they see how much you care about them and how much you're invested in making them the best that they can be. Yeah. That you're going to have mom and dad go, I'm really exhausted and I need some help. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll rely on you too. You know, it's like that, that you are, a, I mean, you're a healthcare provider. You gotta, if you provide mm-hmm. for the whole family, they're going through a lot too, if not, you know, more than the kiddo is because they're just trying to take care of everything and the rest of their exactly. family and everything like that. So they they are just as important um, as the kiddo. So uh, I wrote down and circled 
Parents are the gateway. And I think that is very, very true with everything that you've said. You know, if we tie it back to the beginning of this podcast and this episode where you said you got to meet them where they're at, get the parent in or the parents in early, talk to them about what you're allowed to do, what you're not, how they're going to react to certain things like, oh, hey, I have this activator. What are they going to think of that? It sounds like this. I have drop tables. It sounds and looks like this. You know, like there are things that we don't necessarily think about as chiropractors that like are overstimulating to to uh special need the special needs population that we're like oh yeah this is just you know it's just thompson drop tables yeah but that loud bang could really set somebody into a spiral yeah yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely and it can shut them down and then you you don't have their trust anymore and then once you don't have the kids trust you most definitely don't have the parents trust so and that's the hardest part so goes back to the parents (laughs) dr aaron Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being on this show. We've gone on 50 minutes. I told you, these things just get away. You know, they're just like, we're talking, we're chatting, we're having a good time. And then all of a sudden, it's an hour later, and I'm like, well, what the heck? So is, are there any last remarks, closing statements that you want to say, encourage um, chiropractic students? We have a very student-heavy audience. Um, so if you want to say something to the chiropractic student, um, or it, doctor or both, please do. Uh, the floor is yours, and then I'll do my shameless plug after. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's the thing. If you want to get in touch with me, pick my brain or anything like that, um, there's a Facebook group that's called the Special Needs Specialist. Um, you can always find me on Facebook. It's Aaron Jacob Stagner. That's probably the easiest way to get in touch with me. Um, the other thing is, is keep it simple. Hmm. Just keep it simple. If you can, and this is, I keep coming back to this. If I can explain everything that I do to a fifth grader, then I'm okay. Yep. And I have a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old. So if I can explain it to them and make them understand it, anybody else should be able to get it. Yeah. So that's the, that, and get your, get your intentions right. And everything else will take care of itself. I promise. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, Doc. Thank you so much again for being on the show. This is the Chiropractic Compass podcast and Facebook Lives brought to you by the legendary chiropractor. I'm your host, Johnny Ruder, and we were here tonight with Dr. Erin Jacob Stagner. As she said, you can find her on Facebook, her program, Special Needs Specialist for everyone, chiropractors um, and any other professional healthcare or not healthcare related is welcome to do that Uh program with her it launches in august and i also want to say when i got those phone calls um i i want to go back to that because i did have a thought and it just popped back into my head um you are meant for this you're made out for this right like that that is absolutely why dr barbara eaton said you know this is this is your path you know this is this is where you're supposed to be absolutely 100 percent agree with it and i could not could not imagine anyone else leading the charge on this. So congratulations. I'm pumped for your program to come out and call me when it does, because uh, I would love to have you back on the show to promote it and get it out to as many people and in front of as many screens and eyeballs and text necks that are out there looking at this and watching this. So without further ado, head to postachiropracticjob.com right now to post your chiropractic job advert with us. It's going to be a short, shameless plug because this has been going on for a long time and I want you to be able to have some time with your family tonight. So, Dr. Aaron, thank you for being here. Thank you for being on the show. Um, You will and you are most definitely welcome back. Um, As always, I mean, my guests are amazing and I only bring on, I said this earlier, I did a podcast by myself today and just talked a little bit about the legendary chiropractor, where we're heading and how we got to where we're at right now. And, you know, it's people like you that, you know, I I either know or I connect with somehow through other people and networks and relationships. And one person's like, you got to talk to this person. And then that person's like, you got to talk to this person. And then all of a sudden you end up at these really cool people that bring insane value to this show. And if people are not watching this, oh, I wish I could hit my head on my microphone, but that would be really loud. But like, you gotta be watching this content. You gotta be reading this material and this literature, and you gotta be listening to this podcast or any podcast that you're interested in learning from, because people, you know, for Dr. Aaron and I to hook up and 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 
you know, get our schedules aligned is tough enough, but also to sit down for an hour conversation about, you know, her program and just taking care of kiddos with chiropractic. I mean, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. And time is valuable. Time is money. And time is, uh, is the virtue that everybody wants and nobody has. So, (laughs) so doc, thank you for being on here. Any closing remarks after that? No, thank you so much for having me, and I'm super stoked that you're gonna let me come back. <laughs> how how can't I? All of I mean, I, I, all of my guests are welcome back. I mean, unless you say something that's completely like, oh, I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> like, then we just gotta remove the entire video. But I don't think that happened tonight. So, <laughs> awesome, Doc. Thank you for being on, and uh, thank you everyone for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and thank you for staying tuned with us for 55 minutes. Thank you all and good night.